Hi guys and welcome to this fourth video of the But How Do It Know companion video series. So today we'll be, we're going to be covering um, a chapter called Remember When, which is on uh, page 24 of the book. And we will be looking more closely at a circuit uh, that is called a one-bit memory. So a circuit that's able to remember um, a, a bit of information, so either a one or a zero. While I was reading John's book, this is really one of the the, the, the elements that really uh, blew my mind, literally. Uh, I've been working with computers for a long time. I knew about hard drives. I knew about RAM. I knew about all this stuff. But I never really understood how simple logic gates could, in fact, be made to remember values. And uh, so I found really this concept being really... Uh, really exciting. So if we look at uh, the diagram that uh, John has on uh, page 24 of the book, uh, what's even more incredible is that we can build this one bit memory using only the parts that we know so far and that we've been working with, mainly our, our old friend uh, the NAND gate. So if you look at the circuit uh, closely, uh, we, we can see that the way the one bit uh, memory is constructed, you have an input and an output and another signal that uh, called the set signal that it can be used to instruct the circuit to remember uh, the value that is currently uh, being uh, provided on the input. Uh, if, and if you look at the circuit a bit more, comp more closely, excuse me, you will see that one of the, uh, first of all, it's really, I find, quite complicated. And uh, one thing that's astonishing is you can see that it is uh, basically built with a lot of feedback loops. So you see that the output of certain parts are piped back in as inputs to other parts. And this is really not something that would have occurred to me uh, to do uh, with logic gates where we are pretty much used to uh, connect them in a linear fashion. I don't know who came up with this uh, circuit, but uh, it's it's really it's really elegant, I find. Uh, so this this circuit also is not this is not mentioned in the book, but this circuit is also called a D-latch. So if ever you uh, come across that that term, uh, you will know that this one-bit memory that we're going to be using here uh, has a different name. So we're going to take a little break now. We're going to go set up our uh, our uh, test bench to um, basically uh, construct our one-bit memory circuit on it. Uh, it's a bit difficult to see uh, once the circuit is built uh, from the video because you have a lot of wires crossing over each other. If you look into the description box below, I provided a link to a schematic that I drew that uh, if you want to reproduce uh, the circuit, uh, you will find, uh, I think, uh, a lot easier to read. So uh, I'm going to go set this up and I'll be right back. Okay, so we've uh, reconfigured our test bench here with the one bit uh, memory on it. So if you remember when we introduced the 7400 chip initially, uh, we uh, looked at how it was built up of four different NAND gates. So in this circuit, we're using all four of those NAND gates uh, all connected together. So to map them onto John's uh, diagram, down here will be what comprises gate 1, gate 2, gate 3, and gate 4. Uh, we're going to look at the, the pins one by one and see how everything is connected together. Here we have I, so the input to the circuit. On pin 2 we have S, which is used to set uh, the value inside of uh, the memory bit. On pin 3, we have the output of gate 1, which is labeled A in uh, the diagram. This is connected uh, on top here as one of the inputs of gate 2. The second input of gate 2 is the S signal uh, from before. This gives the output of gate 2, which is called B in, um, in uh, John's diagram. 
going down to gate 3. So the first input is uh, A, output of gate 1. The second input to gate 3, um, pin 5 here, is the output of gate 4. And then the output of gate 3 on pin 6, which is O, and actually the output of our entire circuit, goes back into gate 4 as an input. So you can see that there really is a feedback loop here between gates uh, 3 and 4 where the output of one becomes the input of the other and vice versa. And this is actually, I believe, what captures the value inside of the memory uh, circuit. So we'll be connecting I and S to uh, ground just now and uh, we'll power up the circuit. All right. All right. So um, we've powered our circuit, and uh, we can see that nothing much is going on. The LED is off. Sometimes when we power the circuit like this, the LED turns on. So the the value that's captured inside of our our uh, memory uh, bit, the initial value is actually random. Sometimes it's zero. Sometimes it's one. So uh, what you need to remember here is if you're building a circuit using these types of uh, one-bit memories, you need to make sure to initialize it first to ground if that's what you want uh, it to be. Generally, you'll want the value to be zero uh, by default. So the way we want to use the circuit is set some value on I, then bring the S signal high and low or set it to one and then zero. And that will uh, capture inside the circuit the value that we had on I. So if I put high to 1 here, now I will toggle the S signal 1 and then 0. And we can see that now our uh, 1 value is captured inside of the memory circuit. If we bring this to 0, it doesn't have an impact. And the uh, output is still uh, 1. So now we, let's say we want to put zero inside of our memory uh, bit. So we already have zero here as the output, which is connected to ground. Toggle this guy. And now uh, our RAM, our memory bit, sorry, is set to uh, zero and the LED turns off. So it's uh, really cool to see how uh, with these combinations of gate, we can capture uh, a bit of information and use it uh, to do something else. So uh, in the next chapter of the book, John goes on to create what is called a byte by combining eight of these um, uh, one bit memory uh, circuits to create a one byte memory circuit. So the bit is just really a concatenation of these things one next to the other because it has eight inputs and eight outputs and remembers eight bits. We're not going to build a bike here because it would require uh, eight of those NAND gates and it would take a, up a lot of space. Um, I, won't, I wouldn't even be able to fit eight uh, NAND chips on this little breadboard here. So uh, we're not going to do that. But what we're going to be doing in the next video is look at the circuit that's called an enabler and that allows us to decide with more precision when we want the output of the one bit memory to be sent out and when we want it to not. So uh, that's going to give us more control around how we can use our one bit memory. Uh, we're also going to be connecting these inputs and um, signals using push buttons to make it easier to uh, play around with the circuit. So I'll see you in the next video where we'll add the enabler and uh, use the push buttons. See you soon.